I'm getting frustrated. Wearing my favorite Christmas gift. What? Excellent boiled potatoes. It was time to get to work. This literally came together in like the last 10%. The holidays have just ended. My social battery is at negative 20. Let's make something for me. For the past month or so, I have been recreating costumes from film and TV shows that I have been wanting to put on my own body for years. And we're gonna be continuing it in the new year. <laughs> because why stop? It's been really fun and I've been having such a good time. As you probably know from the thumbnail and the title, I'm gonna be sewing Sophie's blue dress from Howl's Moving Castle, specifically the movie that was made by Ghibli Studios. This is my favorite comfort movie. I watch it a couple times a year. It's my favorite animated movie. Although this year, my favorite animated thing, I guess, because it's a TV show, is Blue-Eyed Samurai. Yeah, that's that show's amazing. <laughs> but still, my favorite animated movie. And top three movies of all time. I read the book and I thought it was super cute, but the movie holds probably a lot of nostalgia for me. We're gonna be making the blue dress that she wears through most of the film. She wears um, different versions of this dress. There's a green one at the beginning and a yellow one at the end, but I just so happen to have thrifted did the perfect color for the blue dress. Of this blue dress, there's even a more casual version and a fancier version that Howl kind of casts to make it look more silky. I thrifted this beautiful, just blue cotton bed sheet, very simple for like $5. And my mom had these old velvet pillows that she just gave to me because she knew that I could probably use them. And uh, they are a perfect match for the blue cotton. As far as the costume, and what it looks like the inspirations might have been. The silhouette itself looks very similar to working class women's silhouettes of the late Victorian era and the early Edwardian era. However, they usually wore shirts and skirts. This is a dress. So this could also kind of be read as something more akin to the tea dresses that upper class women would have worn, which was a little bit more of an informal gown. The couple of people that I have seen make this dress tend to lean more summer and spring, which totally makes sense. See seems like the movie itself takes place during springtime. However, it is currently winter. So I'm gonna make a wintry version. Velvet doesn't read very springy or summery. The reason I chose this project is because I found a pattern on sale on Etsy by, oh, uh, the shop's name on Etsy is Made with Merida. And uh, I'll put the link down in the description if you would like to get this pattern too. I'm not gonna be changing much about this pattern. I usually do. That's kind of what I like to do. I like to take a pattern and kind of overhaul it to match me and what I want. We're not gonna be doing it. I'm tired. We're gonna be following this pattern, mostly. We're not gonna be doing a lining. We're not gonna be doing anything fancy. This is just going to be as simple of a project as I possibly can because I'm in the sewing mood. I watched Sostein's video a long time ago, maybe a year or two ago, I don't remember. She made her own version of this dress and she's just so detailed and she put so much effort into it and it turns out gorgeous. I'm not gonna be doing any of that stuff. It's gonna be so easy and simple. <laughs> We're cutting every every corner that is available. Since we seem to be on this trend of making things from media, you guys had anything, any costume, anything that you would want me to make and kind of put my own spin and take on, I would love if you guys would put that down in the comments because I just might make it. And with that, let's get onto the project. Okay, so the pattern process was pretty simple. You just lay it out in numerical order and then tape it together and then you just cut it out. Also, can we talk about how good of a color match the velvet is to the cotton? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the only pieces that I didn't cut out was the skirt piece. It was just a rectangle, so I used one of my skirt pieces that I've used on every dress for the past few videos. This is just nice and voluminous, but also a bit more flattering on me, I think. Perfect timing for the lawnmower. I just realized something, is House Moving Castle, like the original book, is it based off of Eros and Psyche? Because I remember there was one scene where like her friends and family come to visit and it gave me vibes of when Psyche's sisters come to visit and Hal is also like a winged 
creature. I don't know. Anyway, now that I've gotten all the boring stuff out of the way, it's time to move on to the fun stuff. I think the first thing I should do is put the yoke together and then the bodice together, like the lower part of the bodice, and then put them together. I literally had just enough fabric to fit everything. I had to kind of take in the width of the skirt. So the skirt is not going to be quite as flowy as it normally is, but I think it will be comparable. But let's get going. So while you're watching me put the yoke together, I wanted to quickly mention that if you are like me and like watching analysis videos on media you enjoy, one of my favorites of all time is Bread Sword's video on Howl's Moving Castle. I'll put the link in the description. The only thing I mentioned here is that I folded the front edges of the yoke under twice so it wouldn't need lining. I got my Sophie wig. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try it on because I can't wait. It's my ruined my hair that I have, but you know what? It's greasy anyway, hold on. She's beauty, she's grace. Definitely not perfect because of the big bun, but so cute. I then started putting the lower bodice together. I added tabs to the side back pieces and I gathered those front panels and attached the yoke. The fit was pretty good, but I could take the top of the side seams in quite a bit. Then it was time to work on the collar. I decided I didn't want a white ruffle like Sophie has, so instead I sandwiched a ruffle into the collar in the cotton fabric. I don't know if it's me or the pattern. I'm assuming it's me because I'm the one that like doesn't follow instructions. The collar just doesn't fit. It's so small. I even extended it and it's still too small. There's this little tuck right here. It's really hot too, cause I made it out of velvet. So I might just go off script here and like not do an actual collar, maybe do another ruffle and just put it here instead. So, I'm getting frustrated. Collars take a lot of precision to put on, so I just pouted like a child the entire time I was fixing this because I enjoy sewing until even the tiniest thing goes wrong. This looked better, but I needed a break. So I decided to try my hand at making the herring pumpkin pie from Kiki's Delivery Service for Sunday family dinner with the ingredients I had lying around, of course.
was still feeling frustrated at this point, so I put on some comfy clothes and thought to myself, let's finish this beach. Wearing my favorite Christmas gift. What? Excellent boiled potatoes. It was time to get to work. I started off easy by putting the skirt together, thinking how could this go wrong? I then proceeded to pin the top of one piece to the bottom of another. So great start to the day. I then did the gathering trick on my skirt that I did last time, and it was done in no time. You can go watch my last video if you want to see more specifics on this. I also did the same trick on the bottom of the sleeves and attached the cuffs. I bought some ribbon that I was hoping would match to add to the skirt, but it was a bit more saturated than the other velvet, but a lot of my seams were not perfect because like I said, this was supposed to be a super lazy project. So I decided to cover some of those seams with this ribbon and that would pull it in a little bit more when I added it to the skirt. It was then time to attach the sleeves to the top and the top to the skirt. At this point, I felt like I needed more waist definition, so I added a belt out of the ribbon and added a couple layers of interfacing to add some structure, with a hook and bar at the back so it would be separate from the dress. It was then time to add the ribbon to the hem. I'd done this type of hem once before and I thought it would be perfect for this lazy project. I pinned the ribbon on the wrong side of the skirt, where the bottom edge was how long I wanted the skirt to be. Then I sewed a tiny seam there. I then trimmed off the excess of the skirt, flipped the ribbon to the right side, sandwiching that raw edge in between them, and stitched the top edge of the ribbon to the skirt. And now it is time to show you the final result. And we're done. <laughs> this literally came together in like the last 10% before that. I didn't think I was gonna like this. I, I was pretty down on this project. I, at one point I was like, if this is a thing that I can put on my body, I think that's the best that's gonna be able to happen. I actually really like it. I think it's really cute. I love the ribbon hem. There's certain things that you can do to kind of weigh down the hem. Like there's hem weight, there's like a horsehair braided thing that you can do. And I feel like the ribbon at the end kind of weighs down the skirt enough to where it kind of flares out really nicely. I really loved doing that hem. It was so easy. I am definitely going to do that again. I really love the kind of two-tone velvet. Like this velvet really matches well with the cotton and then this is just like a little different and I think that adds so much interest to this. It makes it a little bit more unique, you know, but that is going to be it for me this week. I hope you had a fun time. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It certainly helps helps me out and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.